Greetings, friends, and welcome to our eighth installment of a Bible Refresher in Five. What's in it for you? Reed Bear here, pastor and teacher at West Parish of Barnstable United Church of Christ on Old Cape Cod. Today, I want to talk to you about what to do with the violence in the Bible. Not the violence in the sense of the horrible ways humans treat one another, something which is as old as time itself, the wars, the rapes, the crucifixions, and so on. But the violence which seems to be sanctioned, even encouraged by God himself. For instance, in the Old Testament, there are numerous transgressions for which God requires the death penalty, including premarital sexual intercourse, sexual intimacy when one partner is married to someone else, working on the Sabbath, and even persistent rebelliousness on the part of a child. And then there's the conquest of the land of Canaan, the promised land. After fleeing Pharaoh and enslavement in Egypt, the Israelites mass on the border of the land we now know as Israel, a land occupied by the Canaanites. And according to Deuteronomy 20, Moses gives these instructions, or is given these instructions. As for the towns of these peoples that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, you must not let anything that breathes remain alive. You shall annihilate them. What are we to do with this? How do we reconcile these texts with the God who in the Old Testament we read grieves in his heart over the violence humans inflict on one another? How do we reconcile these texts with the character of God we know in Jesus Christ, who tells us to love our neighbors, to love our enemies? Well, for me, the way forward is inextricably bound up with how we read the Bible. If we believe that the Bible was essentially dictated by God word for word, then, we, then it seems we are stuck with accepting that what we read accurately describes God's actions and God's will. But, on the other hand, if we, as Adam Hamilton writes in his book, Making Sense of the Bible, if we recognize the Bible's humanity, that it was written by human beings whose understanding and experience of God was shaped by their culture, their theological assumptions, in the times in which they lived, then we might be able to say, in this case, the biblical authors were representing what they believed about God rather than what God actually inspired them to say. So when we look at the passages dealing with the conquest of Canaan, for example, we can start by recognizing that the warriors we read about were living in a time when violence was seen as part of the way in which God accomplished his purposes. They attributed to God words, commands, and deeds that they believed God would have authorized or done, and which they wanted done. In addition, these texts were often written long after the events in question, and a purpose of such was to encourage readers to the levels of courage and sacrifice that the heroes of old are portrayed as exhibiting. Well, for me, to be faithful to Jesus Christ, to the one who chose to prevail, not through picking up the sword, but through the path of self-sacrifice and love, when we read the Bible, we need to question those parts of Scripture where God is portrayed in a way that is inconsistent with Jesus' life and message. To be faithful, we need to ask whether those passages reflect not the will of God, but instead the culture, worldview, perspective, hopes, and fears of the human authors. In other words, if we are to take the Bible seriously, we cannot always take it literally particularly when we try to use it to justify 
our all too human tendency to demonize others, to make war on them, even to kill them. What's in the Bible for you? Nothing less than new and abundant life. See you next week and God bless you all, everyone.